guys hello and welcome to the setup guide as promised for the silverstone track in the tattoos ft60 we are going out to hit the track with the default setup and start driving from scratch here um we are about to get out of the garage And uh, start the testing. In general, Silverstone kind of high speed and high downforce track. Um, so, whoops, we will do a lot of adjustments um, as per usual. But first, we're going to set ourselves a reference time to actually work on the setup. Hence, why we're going to hit the track real quick and set in one, maybe two fast laps. That will give us a benchmark so that we can see how uh, working on the setup will improve everything. I've not yet applied the usual R Factor 2 things that work pretty easily, which will be minimum tire pressures. That's going to be the first big change. Actually, you know what? That, since that is. Uh, quite a common thing. Minimum tire pressures, they definitely will work. So we put them straight away. That saves time. And actually, because uh, we're trying to find a good setup um, that will speed up the process. So, again, speaking about Silverstone as a high downforce track, um, there are two, maybe three good overtaking spots. This being the first one, and I'm gonna show you why that will be because I expect it to be pretty easy in that car to go around the quick chicane in full throttle condition. The rear road I have uh, chosen is light and, of course, static, so that every improvement will come from the driving. And if you have a good setup working on light, preset of the railroad uh, it will work in higher grip conditions as well but we've seen in Sunfall that the servers on the official competition system are not too much rubbered up hence why we go with the light preset towards the car um, it is a something between Formula 4 Formula 3 spec um, the engine is pretty interesting, means the power band is in a specific way, that short shifting is actually beneficial to the power itself, so you see us hitting the shifter at like 6.1, 6.2k RPM, the engine itself revs up to 6.6 though, and beyond that, We'll have another issue with the car, I'm not sure if our factor 2 will uh, fix this, but uh, we will run into the limiter of the 6th gear in the race, definitely in slipstream when trying to overtake, so that's something to take a look at. First of all, first lap, gonna attack the track, turn 1 and 2, should be flat out of the car, let's see if we can do it. Yes, flat out, no issue whatsoever. So first heavy braking zone into turn 3 and 4. A hairpin with another hairpin right after it basically. And here the most important thing is the exit because onto Wellington Strait another split sprint where you can goodly sit into slipstream. Coming up to the second heavy braking zone into turn 6 is going to be the second good overtaking spot around here. Turn 7 goes tight, as turn 8 will be a classic tight, white tight, 180 degree right hander, especially with the exit being super vital. Can make a difference on the exit here if you're close enough, there may be a possible attack for you into Cops Corner, but I advise to kind of sit back and wait. This Cops Corner is a very high speed right hand turn, making that side by side can be difficult. 
going into Mackett's back at the chapel. First two corners are flat, then a slight break in into left, one downshift, another downshift for the right. That's the exit of chapel. And onto hangar straight we go into the slipstream again before Stowe will be the next harder braking zone and the third good overtaking opportunity. Into the braking we go. So, that was one lap into Klopp. Should actually take Klopp more tight and uh, set up the car more for turn 17 for the right hander. We'll do this on the second lap now, trying to beat that time. The that was one lap around Silverstone, the 54.39. Actually, 3.9, but kind of 4, you know. Wow, there is so much braking force on the front, and the brakes are pretty poor in the standard setups. I'm gonna work on that first. Second lap most likely being a lot quicker due to the tyres warming up. So I may even do a third lap just to see. Important for this one, the apex is right here, super late. And then the tight white tie. Don't go too wide here, make sure the car points back to the inside pretty soon that you can get full throttle on it. Then into Cops Corner we go. Well, we're definitely kind of missing some aerodynamical turning momentum. Uh, we're gonna look at this, how we can achieve this. Kind of understeering white a lot here. Not very happy with the balance overall. We're gonna adjust a few things and then surely uh, we'll be a bit faster. So kissing the limits and nearly into Stowe. And now taking up again what I said about the final chicane at club. Stay tight in the left hander. So brake hard. Stay more tight and open up your way into the right hander. Because as you can see now, Delta Timer is climbing up. And then it's a 53 point. That was a 153.64. So I'll try it for another one, see if that's an improvement. If not, we're gonna head back to pit road to do the first adjustments. First, definitely been increasing the brake pressure because you need the performance on the brakes to do overtaking. Apparently, we're gonna do this straight away. So um here on the tires i would recommend going one uh, going up a click in the front and going two clicks up in the rear just to give the car more yeah more mechanical grip because uh, that is really what is also required here uh, fast direction changes the car is not allowed to slip over and over um despite you see inside temperatures are a lot higher uh, than the outer temperatures um, do not hesitate to still keep it that way. It works pretty much best here on our factor too. Um, looking into the aerodynamics, um, I advise to go at least two clicks down with the rear wing. The front wing are gonna keep it right there because you know I want to have more aerodynamical rotation. Therefore I need to shift the weight balance, uh, the, the aerodynamical balance to the back in order to get the car into rotation. Looking at the suspension right now, um, the Entis way is also known as being the anti-roll bar. Um, I'm gonna put that a little softer at the front um, into the 18.7 millimeter area because you know we need a little bit more um, turning momentum. And then something very commonly used on R Factor 2 is a softer rear anti roll bar as well. We're going to go to the 12.0 millimeter on this way. And because we want to have good exit performance, we're going to introduce a little bit of positive towing. That is for the acceleration that the car 
doesn't start to slide around weirdly, hopefully. On the brakes, as I said, maximum pedal force needs to be increased, and I felt that the brake bias is a lot too much to the front, so I'm going to put it, yeah, 54.1. So let's see if those uh, improvements will be good or are overdone already. We'll find out on this pretty soon. Sorry. So what is well re very important now is the fact that you position your car for the exit to give it as, as least steering input while being full throttle as possible. So tight, white, tight, make the car come back to the inside and then you see it is a lot more stable on the exit thanks to the positive tow. Also a softer rear anti-roll bar makes that more easy. Let's go into Cops Corner, see whether the aerodynamical rotation is a bit better. Uh, kind of improved, but I think it can still be improved. Let's have a look later on. Into Mackets, Packets and Chapel. Yep, kinda looks goody. Let's see, I think we should also have improved top speed, meaning that we're soon about to hit the limit at, at the end of this hangar straight, a little earlier than usual, we'll see that on the flying laps. Definitely the braking way is improved, it's a lot more short, there is a lot of uh, grip on the tyres which you definitely need to use, and only really can use with the brake performance at 100%. If you guys do encounter any questions during this setup guide, feel free to put the comments down or put the question down as a comment in the area below. I'm gonna have a look at it and answer it. So let's have a look. A little bit of improvement out of the first turn. And this is now where the rear wing should come into play. Ah, uh, we're not really significantly go quicker on the straight. But it definitely helps in the turning. We'll set something about the steering angle to be correct. Going through the exit, let's see. Cops corner should be a huge improvement as there's more aerodynamical rotation. Sadly, that wasn't the case. Maybe we're still talking about cold tires. We're going to see in lap two. Sadly, effed up the exit here. But the fact that we're already speaking about a 53.7, at least from a potential point of view, means that we should be on the right way for a, for a good lap time. You will see probably another time gain into the braking zone or the club chicane. Go from 240. Oh no, 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 no. Well, that will F up the second lap. So don't touch that exit curb, forgot to mention. That was a 157.71. We'll still look for improvement of the lap. Don't think it's going to be full 610 what we're missing here. So we need to find half a second while driving around the circuit. Well. So with the new setup we found two and a half tenths in turn three and four. Let's see if we can make up more time. Turn six. 
26 27 This is a much better exit and you now see the effect of the rear wing as well we're going slightly quicker than before on the straight here see the delta coming down even more and also corpse corner now roughly a tenth quicker if you include the exit straight here so definitely the right way to go with a setup more rotation in the high speed corners you see this also in the exit here of chapel backets backets in chapel we found another tenth and then if we count our F up from the beginning of the lap away, this could be a 53.2. So we both agree of just doing it the next lap correctly. Just don't touch that exit curb too much. There's still a PB and shows how much potential there is in the car. 53.2. Six that still, was a one but 50 you see now on the delta six zero. where we are, half a second up to turn three. And I would even go a little bit more aggressive with the aerodynamic setup, I think you can still find that more performance when going down with the rear wing another click. Um, then I also feel the brake bar has been too much at the front still. Not allowing uh, enough rotation in the corners. <laughs> Being on the brakes, yeah, also on the aerodynamical side, as I said, there is uh, still a little bit of hesitation going on. And I found a little bit more performance even in uh, Mackets, Backets, and Chapel. So you see, the setup changes are worth roughly four or five tenths. Maybe close to six, uh, depending on, on the driving performance as well. Can actually also keep it here in third, we'll keep the car balance pretty nicely without gear changes. So, and then there's a 35.0. That was a 153.08. Have a look how the fourth lap will be, I expect though. We will now start losing time overall. Not fast enough, back tight to the curb. This will mean lost momentum on the exit. In the meanwhile, you see at the bottom 1.38 liters a lap, 1.4 liters a lap I saw last lap. I have a quick calculation as we can already kind of determine the laps that will be turned for the race. And now you see Tires are starting to fade away, but I already going to do the fuel calculation. Well, we're going to do this at the end because we don't want to uh, unload the car fuel-wise and therefore gain performance on the track. So what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to improve the suspension again in the back. Just going to park the car here. Um, so. 
we're gonna go even further down let's say 52.0 52.3 on the brakes that gives a lot better rotation without locking up the front on the weight distribution well lateral we don't want to look at weight distribution in general we can go a click further to the back or keep it the same um, it will be a little bit more aggressive here uh, with the weight at the back but for stability reasons we just keep it straight at the default uh, suspension as i already mentioned um, so we're gonna at least go a click more hard in the back that will definitely help the steering rotation altogether beyond that we need to uh, improve the rake which means uh, going down by two clicks on the rear right height that will improve the rear end grip and yet uh, speed up the car on the straights and on the anti-roll bar we go two clicks harder again to get more rotation and with those changes we should be able to go into the 52s ah forgot something i uh, want the rear wing to be on seven because aerodynamical rotation in the high speed corners that should help us good time now we should have a kind of more pointy car yet still quite stable thanks to us um, putting the car down a little lower by also reducing the rake as I just did uh, not only improved the rear end stability but also took away the turning momentum a bit in the slow speed turns so that may be an issue we'll find out on that soon but also the car should not be as violent in direction changes so uh, overall should be more balanced, more planted. Remember when you look at this cool tire still? Anyway, if you got uh, questions about the setup guide, if you got questions about something that we've done here, uh, make sure you note down your questions down in the comment area below. We're gonna have a look at that, answer that. Also, the setup can be found in the description of the video. I have uploaded it on a Google Drive where you can uh, simply pull it down. And uh, it will not be the most perfect setup, but it will be a good base, uh, better than the default set. And if you kind of look at the values and think like you're lost, um, then you can have a grab at it. That's for sure. Hence why we do this. So, something you will clearly will see uh, will be a time gain on the straights, as I already mentioned, with lower rear right height at the back. Lower rake means lower drag and higher top speed. I would be surprised if the first lap would be the improvement straight. You see lots more higher top speed indeed, but I think cold tires will prevent us from improving. to heat yet. So this should be the point now where we start gaining on the straights. Yeah with a with a more stiff anti-roll bar the car may be a little bit more twitchy out of the slow speed turns. But uh, you should definitely see an improved cornering in, in the high speed area. As we've turned even more momentum to the front, you see a faster exit out of cops. Onto the back straight now. So let's see, this is now where all the momentum of the ray goes. You see we're still gaining, nearly hitting the limiter now. 
big time. So we even go into the 52s on this lap and I'm still sure we can improve it by another tenth or two in the next lap. Enhanced traction out of the final turn, which is good. The lap was a 152.85. 52.8. So a good second quicker than the standard basic setup. Yeah, despite a little bit more twitchiness, overall more cornering performance. Now driving errors will come into play when speaking about the performance of the car. As I said, small mistake in cops, still identical compared to last lap. A little bit twitchy now, coming out of uh, Mackett's Backett's and Chapel. But as you can see, it's looking good for improvement still. Ah, this was the driving error stuff I meant. I'm gonna go for another lap. But this was the braking bias now, being probably a tad too much at the front when you trying to real push it hard. So this is now the point where we would need to start thinking about optimizations on dumpers and everything. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna quickly do something towards that. Um, on the brakes, we go a little bit more defensive again. 53-0 should be fair enough. On the chassis, uh, we stay the same. On the suspension, we allow the weight transfer to the back a little bit more easy and keep the weight a little bit further at the back. On entry, so the slow bump softening means we have easier traction on acceleration and the rebound stiffening means that we are going to have the weight a little bit more long on the rear that means while braking and turning the weight at the back stays stable therefore the car should not step out as violently on the drag braking should be even more controllable everything now. Gonna see, two more laps will prove and that's gonna do it then for this one. I advise definitely third gear for the exit here as the torque on the car is uh, pretty powerful in the low speed area makes the car easily kind of snapping let's see if we can improve the 52.8 the car may be a little bit more easy to drive now uh, it may potentially have lost a tad of performance really just marginally it's about you know going a little bit easier about that bump not setting up the car 
so bad on the exit. Because if you're not used to it, you may lose the car there. Let's see if this dry braking issue is improved. Yes. Car tends to more understeer, but you know, braking bias from this point onwards comes down to personal liking. So, second gear corner, shift up into third before here. And you can take the speed with you to the fast lap. Let's see what we can do. everything flat out, make sure you turn as minimum as possible and simply let the car go yeah you see a huge improvement in the overall car stability here thanks to a little dumper setting keeping the way a little bit more back located at the back Therefore, improving the downfalls on the rear axis. This is also a side effect of the new setting. As I mentioned, the car may be a little bit more... Um, or may lose a tad of performance in some aspects. Oh. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> So don't touch that exit curb too hard either. <laughs> Sadly we killed the lap time here. Yeah, uh, due to the fact that we've now rearranged the dumper settings, um, the high speed corner may suffer a little bit from it, as the rear end is softer and takes away that turning momentum again. That little bit of rotation we have. So let's see in a second now where the tyres are fully up to life, especially after that slide. How the car will feel. Starting to do slight mistakes, I'm sorry. The lap was so a 150. We're gonna deduct 50,000 50, after the lap. It's more like 50. So for the slow speed corners, the setup is definitely an improvement now. It's just about carrying that improvement over the high speed turns, kind of. Yeah, you see a little, a little bit of uh, performance loss in turn eight. Oh, nothing too major, let's see about cops. Identical still. So it's still looking into a good mood. Mackets, Backets and Chapel will be vital. Yeah. As I intended, or as I already said there's going to be probably a little bit of performance loss but it's a huge gain out of the slow turns you've got a stability gain into stoke can carry more speed there more speed on the exit more lap time performance and i expect another huge gain in this area yeah if not for my stupid spin it would have been one and a half seconds now it's not even the point F. Well, let's for a final time. But you've seen the potential of the setup. Yeah, tires are already starting to fade away a little. So I'm just going to keep it here um, without that last mistake. I mean, you've surely seen it. We would have gained probably another half a tenth in the slow speed area and the reason why this is important the turn four that was just behind us right now is where you get a good run up to um 
I'm gonna actually show this as a as a quick video from the first lap we just did. Um, hello. R. Ah, yeah. So, um, what is very important about the setup that we now use? We may have lost half a tenth or a full tenth of performance in the fast corners from turn 9 to turn 15 but you'll find at least half a tenth back here which if you're if you're close to your opponent you can start slipstreaming all the way from here and either you be able to follow him through here and do an attempt into the heavy braking zone here at turn 3 now Either this works as an overtaking opportunity, or you can p position yourself and gain another tenth over the other setup right here on the exit, if done right, and that will get you into a perfect position for attacking into turn six. So this is the reason why I introduce um, this kind of hello. Mm, for some reason, I lost possibility to go back into the full screen uh, uh oh a small buggy anyway guys um we will come to the end on this one and um i will send you the setup Oh, Alter, nee, das nervt mich jetzt. Hallo? Ist der ein Shortcut? No, it seems not. Hmm. Anyway, guys, um, I will load up the setup from my um, from my Motec file again, and um, we'll then put it up on the drive um, quickly for those. Oh, Leute, das kann nicht wahr sein. Damn new user UI. I do not know how to get back. Yeah, okay. I need to kill the exit here at this point. Um, what we are going to do now, um, real quick, is we're going to go on the calculator so what we're going to have is a 20 minute race so 20 multiplied by 60 for 1200 seconds divided by roughly i'm gonna say we do one minute 53s as an average so 113 will be 10.7 laps let's see where the threshold is so 1200 by Let's see if we can do 50 ones, even if we could do 10.81, still 11 laps, and then 11 times 115, let's say 265 would be an additional minute, so it will be exactly 11 laps. 1.40 of fuel means 16 laps of uh, 16 liters of fuel for you guys to take. Um, that's gonna be the value are going to put into the car setup guys thank you so much for watching this setup guide um i hope it will give you a good chance on um on the racing itself and uh, hopefully the setup bear with me yeah now by stomping on the <laughs> camera assist uh, on on the keyboard I effed it up and yeah I hope that this setup guide will put you forward um, I'm gonna re 
uh, load the setup out of my um, MoTeC files and hope that you will enjoy testing it. Once again, if you have any questions whatsoever, put them down in the comment area below and then enjoy racing altogether. See you!